want you to imagine that you're that man in the reading with the shriveled hand. Now your hand is all shriveled up. And throughout your life, you are conscious that you are different from the other boys and girls in your village. You're picked on by the other children. You're not able to climb the trees or catch the ball or wrestle with them. And you're only able, when you grow up, to do low-paid work like mucking out the stables because you can't follow your father into a trait. You're treated as somehow cursed by God, by the religious teachers. And you don't know whether it's your sin or your parents' sin or your grandparents' sin that have caused you to have this withered hand. And one day you're sitting in the synagogue. Synagogue is like a Jewish worship house, a Jewish church, if you like. And you're sitting there on the Sabbath, the holy day. And there's a great commotion outside. And a crowd of people roll in. And a man who's just beaming authority walks to the front. He has no fancy clothes or badges of honor. But he makes his way to the front and he looks around. Now, you've heard of this man. This man was called Jesus. He was a carpenter from Nazareth. But he was causing quite a stir in the towns round about because he was healing people of their diseases. And he heals on the Sabbath, the holy day. Was he going to do the same thing here in this synagogue? And then he fixes his eyes on you. And he says to you, I want you to stand up. And somehow, feeling very self-conscious, you stand up. And you become aware that everyone is looking at you and you try to hide your shriveled hand inside the cloak. And then Jesus challenges the religious leaders. He says to them, is it lawful, is it right to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil on the Sabbath? And these religious leaders feel very angry and awkward, but they don't say anything. And then Jesus says to you, stretch out your hands. And it dawns on you that Jesus wants to heal you. What do you do? If you stretch out your withered hand, the synagogue rulers, the religious teachers who you respect are going to be angry. And if you stretch out your hand and nothing happens, if it remains a shriveled hand, people in the town are going to laugh at you. But you look at Jesus and you see in his eyes nothing but love. He believes that he can heal you. He believes that he has the power to restore your withered hand and make it whole. So after what seems like an age, you stretch out your hand, and amazingly, it becomes whole. Jesus has healed you. Your life has been changed by Jesus. Amazing. So I want to ask you now, we're back in Malvern Baptist Church now, I want to ask you, what is it that you're resisting doing that God wants you to do and you're not doing it because you're afraid of what other people think of you? What area of freedom is Jesus asking you to move into but you're sat rooted firmly to the spot because you're afraid of what other people might think. Maybe it's an area of Christian service, and you're saying to yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm not old enough. I'm not clever enough. 
I'm not equipped enough. Maybe it's that that Jesus is calling you into and you're saying, no, I don't want to do it. Maybe it's becoming a Christian. Maybe Jesus is calling you this morning to be a committed follower of Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus for real. Maybe you go to church with your family because it's what you do on a Sunday, but maybe God is calling you to that next step to be baptized or to be confirmed or whatever it is in your particular church tradition that he's calling you to do. Maybe God is calling you to that. Maybe you can feel God calling you to follow him more and more. Maybe it's a healing you need to receive, be it a physical healing, like a withered hand or a dodgy leg, or maybe it's an emotional healing, something that you've been heard of in the past and you need to move on from. And I challenge you, stretch out your withered hands. If during the last hymn, you want to respond to Jesus, then come forward. Yeah, get out of your seat, stand up, come out, sit on the front here, and I will pray with you at the end of the service. Sometimes we have to respond to Jesus. That, that man could have sat in his seat with that withered hand. He could have just sat there like a lemon, you know, and Jesus, you know, that would have been a sign to Jesus. He didn't have the faith to believe that Jesus healed him. But he stood up and he stretched out his withered hand and God healed him. God wants to move and work in our lives. He doesn't want us to worry about what other people think. What Jesus thinks is the most important. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're still in the business of healing with their hands. You're still in the the business of changing stunted lives. You still love us and want the best for us. Move in power in our lives by your Holy Spirit today. Amen. Let's uh, sing the... uh, Boys Brigade him where your anchor hold in the storms of life. <laughs>